What's up everybody, Bun here from Bun Hub, and today we are just going to be talking about my favorite exclusives for the PlayStation 4. Let's get into it. So first on the list is Spider-Man. This game is absolutely phenomenal. When I picked it up, I didn't put it down until I had finished it, which really didn't take that long. It's a pretty short game, although I haven't played the DLC, so I'm not sure how much playtime that adds. And if the DLC had been available right then, I would have bought it instantly. The transportation or traveling in this game is also incredible. If you played the original Spider-Man game for PS1 or PS2, or if you played Spider-Man 2 back in the day, you know you expect this web sling to be great, and it is so much fun. There's so many different things you can do in different ways to traverse, and they really made it feel good. You have complete control over it. Even if you run into a building, it doesn't really slow you down or stop you. The combat is also really good in my opinion. I've loved counter systems ever since Assassin's Creed 2 and Batman Arkham City did it pretty well too. It's nearly perfect here and the dodges, counters, and then using your focus bar to instantly one shot an enemy makes you feel like an actual superhero. There's a ton of different suits in the game that you can collect and I believe all of them, and you guys can correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong, are earnable in game. I don't think that you have to purchase any of them for real cash. Next on this list is God of War. Hell yes. This game lets you play as the ultimate pinnacle of masculinity, Kratos. From his origins in the first God of War, where he and two women would gather to shake the bed until the lamp fell off the nightstand, to ripping the head off of basically every enemy he fights, to becoming the fucking God of War. As a kid, this game helped me set some goals, let's just say. Which brings us to this God of War entry, God of War Dad Simulator. You play as an aged Kratos, wizened from all of his previous encounters with death and gods. He now has a son, and that son has no idea that Kratos is a god. One thing Kratos learned from killing every god in existence is how to be humble. Combat has changed up from the previous entries. Instead of starting out with your chain blades, you'll be using the Leviathan Axe. This axe is sick. Watch the clip. And the best part is throwing it and retrieving it does damage both ways. You can throw the axe into one guy's head and punch another enemy in the face and then recall your axe out of the skull of the first enemy right into your hand. The axe is extremely satisfying to use and I love chopping dudes in half with it. One other thing that should be mentioned is that this entire game from the start of the game to the finish is shot in one continuous over the shoulder shot. So it never breaks from the moment you hit new game and start chopping the tree to the end. It's all one shot. If you didn't see this coming, then you probably don't know me at all. Persona 5 is probably in my top 5 games of all time, so you know an extended version of the game is going to be on my list. At the time of filming this video, I'm about 43 hours into the game. Uh, after today's stream, it's actually about 48. So far, it has stayed mostly true to the original aside from adding a couple new characters, new social links, and some tweaks to gameplay to make things more fun and enjoyable. If you guys are interested in seeing a video talking about the differences between Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal, leave a comment below letting me know. It is a video I won't be able to put out until I finish Persona 5 Royal, but I would love to make it. The first playthrough of the regular Persona 5 game took me around 150 hours to finish. Yeah, maybe some of that was AFK time, but uh, this game was worth buying the day it came out at $60, and even more worth it if you pick up Persona 5, not Royal, for $20. Be warned though, Persona 5 Royal is not DLC, so you can't buy Persona 5 and then add on Persona 5 Royal later. Days Gone. Alright, so this game almost didn't make the list. If you've played this game, let me know if you feel the same as me. There were a lot of issues with this game, including that it was both too long and it didn't let you know how long you've played. I guess that I put around 80 hours into it, however the only thing I can say for sure is I played for like a thousand days gone. People online were trying to come up with formulas to calculate how long they have been playing based on how many days gone and I have no idea. Okay listen, I like this game and I'm sorry for being negative. Every character in this game pissed me off and I thought most of them were pretty stupid. Every decision that they make at the start of the game is basically the wrong decision. Decision. The blonde chick decides to help a kid that, in the midst of everything, exploding, people dying, and screaming, is sitting there looking all creepy with a knife. He stabs her. Big surprise. Then, the main character, Deacon, is faced with riding off on a helicopter with his true love that may or may not die before he ever sees her again, so he makes a decision to stay behind with Boozer, the oafy, idiotic biker brother that Deacon puts before his girl. Now, with all that being said, I actually love these characters. Okay, maybe not Boozer, but Deacon. 
Deacon shows so much growth and character development throughout this game. He goes from being kind of a cold-blooded savage to something completely different. He really seems to transform. And when I finished the game, I was honestly kind of sad that I wasn't going to see my homies anymore and I wouldn't get to hang out with Deacon. I think with enough changes and feedback, A Days Gone 2 could be a masterpiece of a game. They really had something special here, and finishing the game was a rewarding and incredible experience. Again, it would have felt better had the game ended faster, and like others have said, it did feel like the game basically ended three different times. So that was strange, but there was like three main stories going on the entire time. Overall, still one of the best games on PS4, and if you paid even $60 for this, you're definitely going to get your money's worth. So of course, this one was on the PS3, but the remaster is only on the PS4, so I'm counting it. Plus, I was going to put Death Stranding, and I found out it's coming to PC this summer, so it's not a PlayStation exclusive anymore. If you haven't played The Last of Us, go ahead and start playing it today. This game has an unparalleled story in my experience. I have never played through a game that hit my feels so hard. You have no idea until you completely finish the game, and with The Last of Us Part 2 coming out this summer, now is the perfect time to do a playthrough. It's a zombie game that plays more like the Uncharted series. The actual gameplay itself can, at times, get somewhat repetitive, but the story is so gripping that it literally pulls you forward through the game. This is one of those games that you're going to have a hard time not finishing once you've started it, at least in my opinion. And with that, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've been here the entire time, I really appreciate it. Make sure to like the video if you did like the video and subscribe if you want to see more content. Let me know in the comment section down below if there's any games I left off this list that should be included, like Bloodborne, I'm sure. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.